I've just dropped my freaking sunglasses in the freaking ocean. Oh, the river. Anyway, needs must, eh? It's gotta be done. The glasses serve me well. My eyes are intact. I've just finished my second top coat. Day five done. Four more to go, so I'm over halfway with the actual painting. And while I was painting, uh, Cameron, my neighbour, popped over. He's just trained to be a stuntman. How cool is that? And yesterday, we met a girl. She is a likely piecing at the worlds for indoor skydiving. How cool is that? See, if people live on boats, they're interesting, right? Anyway, this place is an absolute tip. Um, I'm covered in paint. I spilled some paint on me whilst I was painting this time, which was an absolute nightmare. Uh, but luckily, second pair of gloves, whipped them off, suddenly had clean hands. Morning. Just about to put on uh, the sixth and final coat of the perfection, which is going to be all the white glossy stuff. Done. Before I do, everyone's favourite tool. Hours and hours of this. Hopefully only about an hour now. And then that's the last major bit of sanding. Morning. It's bright and early Saturday morning. I was originally hoping to get the whole of the boat painted with this grip, but there are supply chain issues as there is everywhere in the world at the minute and not enough the hardener is in the country. So basically I don't know if I can have quite enough paint, it's a bit close. I don't want to risk it. And the thing about it is once I start I can't stop. Basically because I'm adding sand to the paint, you have to either recoat within a certain time period, which I think is 24 hours, 36 hours, or you have to sand back again before you can apply the next layer of paint. As I'm going to have sand in the first layer, I won't be able to key in again after that, which means once I start painting, I've got to keep going. Three days is enough, I think, in terms of time span to get everything I need on the boat, especially in the heat we're in. Uh, there's, there's more fitting on my back. There's a whole stainless steel arch to go on here. There's loads to do. It's the most trodden bit of the boat. So if I can get that in, fairly confident. I am confident I've got enough paint and everything I need, all the resources. So it's about seven o'clock now. I'm going to spend maybe like the initial bit of masking up a couple of hours and then a couple more hours to do all the real details. As normal, it's taking a bit longer than I want, and my back is starting to hurt. I've not been doing enough exercises, and by that I mean none apart from just building. But I'm getting there, and I've needed some cool detail now. So basically all the small fittings, uh, like all the blocks and the, the, the cleats and stuff, are all gonna have an inch uh, border around them. All the big things, which is the hatches and just the general surround of the whole boat, is gonna have two inches. And I'm now I'm getting into radius and detail, and I'll show you this bit here I'm looking at. It's a shame my son's not here because it'd be really good to show him what um, you know some applica practical applications of the trigonometry and the shapes and the mass and stuff he's doing every day and loves doing. I've got the fitting which is going to go there, marked it all out. I found the centre. Uh, that is 90. I want 25 round, so 45 radius plus 25. That's what I've got now. And wait, I've lost my centre. It was about there. No. Right. Mess this up a couple of times over. Uh, just put a fair bit of tape on me. Cool, now I've just got to cut it. Right, seriously, guys, where do you put my knife? I need to be left handed for this. I am going to make up a uh, template for, for the two inch and one inch general radiuses, but this is a bit different because it's a bit of a custom one due to the, the part. So I'm going to faff. It is starting to get very warm. Um, we are good, I think about an hour and a half off midday. So the next three or four hours, I've got to keep going, basically, because there's still a chance I can get this coat of paint on today. Um, which would be amazing, but it is getting hot. But yeah, got to keep going. So I've just made up some templates for the radiuses. Key circular saw, a bit of leftover IKEA. So those are my internal and external radiuses. I'm going to go and try and mark them out now and see what looks good. I'm so pleased with how well this coin trick is working. So massive thanks to Max from Porky for passing on the tip. Uh, yeah, check it out. The corners are looking nice. Happy with that, looking pucker, as they say. Uh, and now doing this one. This is another trick. This trick actually got from uh, Andy. You guys remember Andy? We all loved Andy. 
We'll see him again one day. Yeah, this one, he did it with the washer. I had to make my own washer a bit bigger. But basically, this one's for you, John, because I know you like your, your top tips, eh? Put your pen in the middle of the washer, like this, and I'll show you this way around for a minute. You drag it all the way around, and it doesn't matter if it spins. And then, what that's given me is this line here. All the way around there, it's exactly the same distance at all times from here. So I've now just got to cut that very carefully. I have to tape over a bit because I messed up. But, you know, no one's perfect, right? Hey, top tip. I'm going to do like a wink. Top tip. Wait, top tip. I'm just blinking so much, it's so sunny. This uh, taping is proving far more fun. <laughs> it's taking a long time, but it is the sort of work I enjoy. It's like detail, nitty gritty, pity, make it look beautiful in the long run type work. It's getting there, but it's pretty insane. Look at those beautiful curves. Insane, right? How many people who sail on Esperance are ever going to be aware of how necessary those curves were? How many people? Hopefully every single person who ever, ever steps aboard or comes even close is going to go, wow, look at that gorgeous radius on that paintwork. Good morning. So I didn't get around to painting last night in the end. Uh, sometimes you've got to wait for all your birds to be in a row right before you take the shot. And I was so close. I, I, mean, I spent all day from seven in the morning till six in the evening taping yesterday. Um, and I still, I mean, it was been baking hot all night, so I could have easily painted it. I think it would have been fine. But I decided to wait until now. Basically, the thing that really occurred to me last night is quite how far out some of the things are on Esperance. So the table and the hatch in the center and also the legs for the um, seating all the way around, none of that's symmetrical. So if I'm trying to dissect all that with some nice, smooth, crisp central lines, it doesn't work because they can either go down the center of the boat or they can go down a higgledy diggity piggledy path through everything else. So I'm a little bit miffed about that and trying to work it out. So I'm now just trying to do the best of a job that was badly done decades ago. Right, I wanted to show you now another example of marine world insanity madness. So we've been using this really fancy Pollock Bay International uh, Imperfection paint. Lovely stuff. It's what all the gloss white stuff on this boat is. It's a two-pack polyester paint um, specifically for the marine environment. So it's tough, it's really strong against UV and salt corrosion, all these things. And it's going to last for years and it looks great. They offer for grip option to pour the sand in um, and I decided for the very top coat which is the sand coat uh, to not go with not go with them I wasn't convinced and mainly I wasn't convinced because their data sheet and their support work on how to do that sand and do it well just wasn't good enough in short for my confidence and I saw a boat that had it done with that product and I was like there's just not enough sand in there which is I know I could fix that by buying more sand right but just the fact that they haven't supplied the sand. So these are the bags of sand that International sell. This bag was about, about five quid for a bag like this, something like that. And this is supposed to do an entire tin of paint. Maybe, well it doesn't say, this is the thing, it says no instructions, no advice on how much sand per paint. I think they suggest you're supposed to mix it in. And the only way I could test it and get it, get it right was to do this new method, which is what I've been told by a painter at Hailing, uh, and which our friends Porky have done. And you, rather than mixing in the paint, you paint the first layer straight onto the boat into the masked area, then you smother it in sand. Then you wait 24 hours, and then you blow off all the sand. Um, you know, and it goes back to the sea where it belongs. When I did uh, my three samples of the week, these two samples here and here, which you probably can't see very well, but they were when I tried to mix the paint in, mix it in that one sand as well. The, rate, the number amount of sand in this one was, <laughs> this would do about a metre squared. Not even that, it would do about half a metre squared. And I've got 15 metres squared, right? Um, and this one here, when I poured it, it was absolutely smothered in sand. Um, and it's just come out beautiful, exactly as I want. And then, yeah, I blew it off the next day and then painted over it. Anyway, so yeah, chatted to Max and Porky and then subsequently uh, the painter at Hayling. And we're gonna go with what they went with, which is an epoxy paint, which is fine, because epoxy will go on top of the polyester I've already got. Um, it's much tougher, and again, this is it's not specifically a marine product, or at least it's an industrial marine product. Um, it's really tough, really strong, and yeah, the porky guys, they've just had a two year trip to the Caribbean and back, and it said it looks fantastic, and it's served them brilliantly. So I'm really happy with that. And the big thing about this, right, is it's literally just a big tub of paint, which I've 
still struggling to get supplies in the minute, but I've got enough to do the back deck. And it's just standard builder's sand, right? So this was, say, about fiver. This is the amount of sand I think I need. Six quid a bag, and that was an extortionate price because I went to a fancy uh, private hardware shop for it. So yeah, that's the marine. That's the marine thing for you guys. Five quid for this. Five quid. Yeah, six quid for like oh yeah, it just it just doesn't mind nothing. Just international, you just you cheeky bastards. That's what you are. Five quid. Cheeky, cheeky bastards. Moment of truth here. I've just mixed it up the paint. I'm proper nervous after over two weeks of prep. And it's like, if we get this wrong, no pressure. If we get this wrong, then it's basically all boot for nothing. And it's gonna be even harder to redo it. So, you know, this is Cameron. As soon as you paint on, you've got to sprinkle sand over the top. So he's gonna be my sand man. We're gonna go and do a test piece on the pontoon to make sure we're happy. But hopefully, by the time we finish, this entire back deck is gonna look like a beach. And then either end of the day today or tomorrow morning, I'm gonna brush all the top layer of sand off. And then hopefully we have a nice grippy deck, which we can then paint over again until we get the right color. And then lacquer. This is the color the boat's gonna be, Kelly. You, uh, it's the last chance to say, change the color. It's fine. I've got no preference. She doesn't just... care. No, it's not that I don't what care. What if it's wrong? But it doesn't matter. Ultimately, you'll just get used to it. It's fine. It's happening. No looking back. Welcome to uh, Esperance on Sands, or should I say Sand on Esperance. Um, that job went really well, really smoothly. Cam was brilliant. Uh, don't know him that well yet, but actually ended up staying for lunch and had a lovely chat with him and his girlfriend. But uh, yeah, he got straight on the job, worked out what was needed of him, and did the job, which was cool. It uh, looks good. And we um, did a test piece here as well. And actually, this bit here is I'll now brush the sand off, and you can see it's all stuck completely, and not only that, this bit here, a couple of hours ago I put a top coat on it. And things I've accidentally dropped in waterways over the years. Hats, sunglasses, phones, keys, uh, tools, like the spare screws, bits and pieces. Um, for the first time ever, I'm gonna put something in the water that is legitimately okay. This sand here most likely came from the Solent. Most of the sand um, is I think, just south of the Isle of Wight. It's harvested, as it, if that's the right word, for collecting sand. And the cement works are just over there making a racket all day, every day, as they bring the sand in, unload it from the, um, the ships. And then it gets packaged up and put around the world. And that's pretty, pretty almost certainly where I bought this sand from, was a hardware shop. So, I am now going to use the uh, Hoover on reverse and just blow it back into the uh, sea from whence it came. Sayonara, sand. That works out well. Hello sanding, fainting and fairing fans. I've brushed off all the top layer of sand now. Ooh. Looking good. So it's mixing up some of this, this and this to make up some new paint. I'm gonna slap it on. Easy peasy. I've used a lot more, it's using a lot more paint than I wanted it to. It's the sand's soaking it all up, which is what Max told me would happen in fairness. So, you've got to trust the Germans. Germans know far more than we do. That's just a general, what I've learned in life. 
my back is super sore. I've just done three consecutive coats all the way around the stern here. And it's getting late, but the temperature forecast is not gonna drop below 22 degrees. I think the third coat really was essential because it was just looking a bit uneven. But I think we've got there now, which is great. So hopefully that's all good, all ground, all pucker, as uh, people will say. And you guys are loving all this gossip, gassing, gossip. Blimey, it's another long day. I'll keep, oh, keep doing seven. So I don't know, it must be, when is it eight, half eight? Kelly just told me. Christ, started, yeah. Started at half six again, this is stupid. These days are long. <laughs>